Welcome to section 4.2, least squares regression line. So now that we can determine if two variables have a linear relationship by looking at the linear correlation coefficient, we can actually find a linear equation that describes the relation. So that's what we're going to do in section 4.2. We're going to find linear equations that describe the relation. All right, so let's look at the following sample of bivariate data. So we have our x, y ordered pairs. And what we're going to do is we're going to want to eventually find a linear equation that relates x, the explanatory variable, and y, the response variable, by selecting two points and finding the equation of the line containing the points. Okay, so um, we're actually not going to calculate this. If you remember from algebra class, if we wanted to find the equation of a line between two points, first we find the slope, and then we can use our point slope formula. All right, but we're going we're gonna to go about this a little bit more intuitively. All right, and then just to follow up, after you do that from your algebra class, then you write it in your slope-intercept form. Okay, but what we're going to do, we're going to take a shortcut. So essentially, we are going to take this bivariate data, and the scattered diagram has already been plotted. For instance, 0, uh, 5.8, that's that ordered pair, 2, 5.7 is right there, et cetera, et cetera. And so we could come in, and we could draw a line that would model the data. And there's infinitely many lines. For instance, we could look at this line. Um, maybe we think this line is a better model. Maybe we think this line is the best model. Um, we can even choose two ordered pairs, maybe the first and the last one. And we could say that that green line is the best linear equation to model the data. All right, so um, since there are, are infinitely many lines to model the data, the question is which one is going to be the best line? Okay, so let's back up. So which one's going to be the best line? So let's just focus maybe again on this line. So if we were to use this yellow line to model the situation, so predict situations, uh, let's say we could find out what happens at x equals 3. And on the line, x equals 3, that y value will get us about, looks like 3 and a half. Okay. So that dot in green is the prediction when x equals 3. And how we know if this is a good line is we would want to see what the difference between what our line says and what the observation is. So this difference right here. And what we call that is the residual. And the residuals are going to help us determine what the best line is. So let's take a look at this. So the difference between the observed value and the predicted value is the error or the residual. So let me just label some things. The green is the predicted. On the line, so the yellow line gives us predicted values. The observed value is in blue. That's coming from the data set. And the difference between the two is called the residual. And the difference between the two is called the residual. Um, and the formula for the residual, we can write it right here. It's the observed value minus the predicted value. All right, so sometimes the re residuals can be positive. So in this case, the residual is positive because the observed value is above the line. 
Um, but if the, let's say an observation was below the line, like right here, then this residual would be negative. Okay, so um, of course, what one is gonna give us the best lengths? We saw there's infinitely many ways we can model the situation. So the best line, what line should we choose? The best one is called the least squares regression line. And it's the line that minimizes the sum of the residuals. All right, so um, this line minimizes the sum and they actually look at the squares so it doesn't accidentally add up to zero. So they square the errors, and again, the residuals is the difference between the observed values minus the predicted values, and the notation we use for that is y hat. So y hat, we write it like this, symbolizes the least squares regression line. And this calculation is actually quite tedious. So it says the equation of the least squares regression line, so again, the best line, because it, re it minimizes those residuals, is given by this equation. B1 is the slope, so R is the linear correlation coefficient, times S stands for standard deviation, so the ratio of the standard deviations, and B0, right there, that's our y-intercept, and it's the mean of our y-values minus the slope times the mean of the x-values. So that's a, that's a lot of information. Okay, so um, we're really, this is going to be a calculator-dependent section, and we'll see how to use the calculator in just a second. But right now, let's look at the properties of the least squares regression line y-hat. The biggest one is that it predicts the average response variable, so the average y value, the average response variable for all values of the explanatory variable. So again, it's, it's very important, <coughs> excuse me, it's important to remember that y hat predicts averages. That's important. Okay, moving on, um, y hat also will always contain the ordered pair x bar, y bar, so the means of the two variables. And then if r equals zero, the linear correlation coefficient equals zero, that means there's no relation between the variables. So whatever value of x, the explanatory variable we plug in, the response is just gonna be the mean. Okay. So now we have this example, and we're going to turn to our calculator to figure out how to find the least squares regression line. <laughs> 